Concerto by Gustav Mahler. Okay? When you prepare this piece, you're preparing a trumpet concerto. The first movement is just chock full of great solos. And then of course this starts like this starts like this. I get chills when I hear this. Okay, when we when we play it, um, it, it there's there's just nothing like it. Just the complete silence and then the start of it. When we play this, we have to forget we're a trumpet player. Okay? You need to forget everything that you've been practicing in the practice room about attacks. Uh, and, and when you play this, you have to put yourself in where, where was Mahler going with this? Funeral march. Okay? This needs to be chilling and, and, and frightening and, and, and deaf. And later on, despair. Okay, so this this excerpt, yes, we've we've practiced all of the all of the fundamentals in the practice room. But when you play this, you've got to be in an entirely different place. You've got to be in a different world. Okay. Having said that, let's go back and talk about some technical things. Okay. I have a thing I like to do with this, where um, there there are basically two components to the, to this excerpt: the opening triplet figure, and then the sustained full-blown kind of leading the orchestra figure, all right? And what, what I like to do <clears throat> is uh, put into my daily routine, if, if I know this piece is coming up, or usually as an associate principal, I practice the heck out of it and never get to play it, but, you know, if something, if something happens, you know, I, I would have to step in. So when, when this is on the docket, um, I change my daily routine a little bit, and I make an exercise out of these figures. Let's, let's start with, with with this figure first, the sustained figure, okay? Um, I want to get from you just a more, more of a concept of um, dog with a bone, okay? There's, uh, uh, that comes straight from, I studied in high school with Phil Collins, former principal trumpet of the Cincinnati Symphony, and that was his term, and I just loved it. Just when a dog has a bone, it's like, don't touch me, don't get near me. My Bichon the other day ate, ate, ate the, the shell of a pistachio. I'm like, spit that out and he's don't touch, I'm eating that. And I'm like, all right, you're gonna suffer later. <laughs> you know, really. But um, I, I just want to hear this with a bit more um, anger. Anger at death. Don't be afraid. We're all trumpet players. You're not going to offend anyone. much more. minor scale. You know your C-sharp minor scale, right? Yeah. You're from Virginia. You're smart out there. <laughs> um, let's do that on a C-sharp minor scale. And when you spit the 16th out of the, the long note,
Uh, you've got issues in the New York Fellow out here. Now let's take a bigger, fuller breath. Dog with the bone. So I'm not necessarily talking about how much space. I'm talking about what you're doing on that long note before the 16th note. Di, da, 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 da. It's not di, da, 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 da. deadpan, but. How are you playing the end of that long note? Da, 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 da. Let that be the thing to spit out the 16th. From the very first time she played, I, I know you were a little nervous and stuff, and so was I. Okay, but but just this flutter tongue thing, guys, it, it just it makes her sound go like that. And if you're having inconsistencies in the flutter tongue, that means you're the, the kind of air that you want is inconsistent. All right? <clears throat> you want that that air that's going to keep that flutter tongue activated the whole time. Okay? 
Okay. So that that's you know that's another thing maybe to add into your daily routine is do that figure with the flutter tongue. Mm -hmm. um, so that every time we play that, it comes out the way we want it. Um, and how do we want it? Uh, Vacchiano had some really wacky ideas about this opening, but they come from Bruno Walter, who was Mahler's assistant. And, and he would say, hey, Doug, now you know. Now he called me Lindsay. Lindsay, you still dating that pretty girl? And I was like, uh, what about Mahler 5? <laughs> and and, uh, and, and, and he, he said, you know, Walter told me to do it this way. Ba, 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 ba. Ba, 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 ba. I'm like, nobody does that anymore. Um, I have my own thoughts as to why he would ask that. But uh, the other thing he, he, he stressed was um, think of it as ba, 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 bum. E and a one. E and a one. E and a one. As opposed to triple it. Triple it one. He, he thought of it as three sixteenth notes. Um, I like that, except we don't want it to sound like ta 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 ta. Okay? It really needs to be pianissimo, piano, mezzo piano, mezzo forte. And if you were to take a microscope on it, da 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 da. So what we're going to do is let's just do our same C sharp minor scale, okay? Mm -hmm. um, everybody gets hung up with the fact that it's one, two, and three because it's a lot more tubing than, than everything else we play, all right? But um, <clears throat> pretend it's a low C. And actually, Bacchiano did this on a D flat trumpet. He had this guy in New York that made a bunch of instruments for him, and he played the opening on a D flat trumpet, so it was open. Um, but I, there's no reason we can't think one, two, and three is open. So let's let's just do our C sharp minor scale with this figure. Going up the scale. And some will be inconsistent, some will be great. Don't worry about it. Just just up and down the scale. <laughs> What we're doing is on the scale, we're playing the excerpt on each note of the scale. So a little sports on it. Let's come down from this top C sharp. sure it's pianissimo, piano, yeah, mezzo yeah. piano, mezzo forte. And this is why we do this exercise, because it's hard to do that every time uh, unless you've got it in your daily practice. You know, um, It's really easy to play a G in the staff. Actually, it's not. Um, but, but we do that every day, That's you know, right? That's kind of how we start our day, or a C or a low C or something. That's easy. So you want to make this so you don't even have to think about it. Put it, in, put it in your daily practice. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, will you just play how you want that half note to sound? Just play the scale with just the, the half note. So, bah, bah. but I want that half note to be exactly how it would be in a performance. Good 
front on it, you came back from a little bit, and there was a lot of activity on it. Right. Okay, that's what that note is. So make sure you have in mind how you want that note to sound as well. This is our most complicated excerpt, really, of the, of, you know, kind of the top ten of excerpts. There's so much in this thing. So sorry if I'm overwhelming you on things. Now, let's, let's do our scale again. Really, now we're focusing on what is that half note going to sound like? Is it going to sound the same on every note of that scale? Mm -hmm. You want just half notes? No, go ahead and play the entire, the, 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 like, ba -ba -ba -ba, ba -ba -ba -ba, the same each time. too, because she was blowing through the notes before it. It's, a bad quality note is, is a result of not what you did during that note, but it's what you did before it. Okay? Try that again. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Really, uh, intensity all the way to the rest. This is, you're, you're mad at death here. nastiest music critics are there, and, and you got this attitude of, I'm going to show you guys what Mahler really meant. Oh, the pressure. <laughs> it's incredible.